me that uh, Andrew Luck decided to retire. I really have no problem with this. A lot of people, especially on social media, seem to have a problem. Maybe the timing of it, but I think Andrew Luck is a different kind of person. He is to himself. He likes and he does things his way. And he felt it was not worth the risk to continue to play. He's already made $97 million, Gene. That makes it easier. He's passing up another $64 million, but who cares if you got $97 in the bank? He's more concerned about his health moving forward. Your thoughts about this whole thing as it unraveled? Yeah, I think that's completely up to Andrew Luck. People are upset on social media about everything 24 <laughs> hours a day. I don't think that factors into it at all. I don't think fantasy factors into it. I, I, I imagine if you plop down tens of thousands for season, uh, season tickets, you're a little bit disappointed. I mean, imagine right right here what it would be like if Ben said tomorrow, you know what, I'm not playing anymore. I mean, I understand you're upset. But uh, he's got to look out for himself. Uh, and, you know, he, he as much as said, even going back to last year, that his heart's really not in this. Uh -huh. He's had, had so many injuries and so much rehab. He doesn't enjoy it. There's no reason for him to do it. I'm perfectly fine with it, I think, as I think you are, Bob. Yeah, I mean, it's his decision to make. It's his body. I don't think anyone out there understands how much pain these guys go through. Uh, and you just can't sit there and say, oh, you know, he is soft. Or, oh, he's just one of those. It's no. What you want. Go it's, ahead and go through all the assortment of injuries, including a kidney. And, you know, he was bleeding. And it, it got so bad with his he got hit a lot. Oh, yeah. um, I think the offensive line of the Indian Colts failed him. They did not do enough. You know, like Ben in the last four years, they've made a concerted effort, the Steelers have, right. to secure a good offensive line so as he's not to get hit. It's quicker step drops. Just preserve the guy. They did not yeah. do that in, in Indianapolis. Yeah. On top of which, he was a very good player there. So Yeah. Well, anyway. Is there a comeback in his future, or do you think he's done? No, I, I mean, I, that wouldn't make any sense <laughs> to me at all. I mean, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but that would make even less sense, I think. All right, let's go to the lines. We'll begin with line four. That's Ernest in Monrova. What's up, Ernest? How are you? Hey, Bob. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, um, I think the, the, the Steelers, they look pretty good. I like the secondary play. They seem to be uh, moving around, flying around at the ball. The the, the linebackers seem to be. They seem like they picked up a little speed. Yeah, and they did. Another thing. Another thing. Will you say um, uh, they might think about trading Dobbs to the Colts now? Well, I don't, you know, again, I think they fully trust in Jacoby Brissett. You know, when he played in New England for a short bit of time, he was good. I'm not projecting he's going to turn out to be another Tom Brady, of course, but, I mean, he, he can use his legs. They obviously have had him there for a while, Gene. They know what he yeah. is. I would wonder about a backup to him at this point, and if Dobbs, you know, that's, that's not unrealistic. If the Steelers decide Devlin Hodges is good enough to be a third-string quarterback, those guys, after all, very seldom play, ever. Why yeah, not make I, that move? I don't know much more than that the Colts. Uh, I don't know that the Colts are interested in Dobbs, but they do, they do have an opening. There's no doubt about that. As for Brissett, you know, I, uh, Frank uh, Reich thinks, um, you know, seemed kind of comfortable with him. I don't know what else he's going to say. But you're right, Bob. He's been there a little while, knows the system, uh, and the Colts are pretty good. I, you know, I, I, it'll be interesting to see how they react to it. But, you know, I still like their chances of having a decent team. Line three we go. It's Randy in Beaver Falls. Randy, welcome to the sports call. Hey, how you doing, Bob? We're Dean? good. What's up? Hey, uh, uh, I think uh, Benny Snell is going to turn out pretty well. And, uh, and James Conner did a great job the other day, man. Uh, that's great, man. I mean, uh, we, we need to see that out of James, you know? Yeah, and as far as Benny Snell, I think he's in a battle right now with Trey Edmonds for running back as the third running back. Normally, you would defer to a fourth-round pick because he is a draft pick. Trey Edmonds was undrafted. But he played the other night, Edmonds did, and Snell was injured, and I have a feeling it's going to be a tough decision for the Steelers to make, but I do suspect Snell will win, mostly because he was a fourth-round pick. Yeah, the Steelers really aren't in the business of cutting fourth-round picks. I mean, they're patient with their draft picks for a long time, witness Dan McCullers, for example. <laughs> uh, Who I thought had a pretty good game the other Yeah, one. yeah, but what? It's about time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that last running back uh, spot, that'll be interesting because, uh, you know, Samuels has done a good job, too. All right. Line one, it's Jack and Carrick, who joins us right now on Pittsburgh CW. It's the Ireland Contracting Natalie Sports Call. Jack, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious as to why a Major League Baseball reliever would ever need a night off. They only really work maybe like three or four minutes in a night. Well, Vasquez had a four-out save, and I guess that taxed him. I don't know. I, sometimes I think they baby these guys. Yeah, he worked 10 minutes in a day. Well, 
you know, now I see Michael Feliz is getting up. He was supposed to have the night off. Kella's supposed to have the night off. Crick's supposed to have the night off. Vasquez's supposed to have. Chris Stratton is doing a pretty good job considering he is a lone man out there. And there's nobody else who's going to be called in. When you face Hoskins and Bryce Harper back to back with nobody warming up in the bullpen, you made a good point about that last pitch. It was a 3 2 pitch to Bryce Harper. Yeah, I mean, uh, Stratton, uh, you know, is really a minor league pitcher, but there he is facing the highest paid hitter in the game. He has nowhere to put him. He does not. He has nothing to do, other than to to throw him a 95 mile an hour fastball right down the middle on the biggest pitch of the game, and Harper swings and misses it. Let that be a lesson to you, pitchers. Hitters will get themselves out if you give them a chance to get themselves out. If you're constantly fooling around with balls in the dirt, and balls on the edges, I mean that's that's a good way to pitch too. But you know, don't don't overcomplicate it. PA Ram 59 on Twitter at KD Pomp at Gene Collier says, Do you guys feel the Pirates have enough offensive strength on the current roster to make the playoffs in 2020? Are their main issues primarily pitching? The answer is yes, primarily, and their offense is okay, but I don't see them as a playoff contending team next year, do you? I do not. I think uh, pitching is their bigger problem, but they could sure use somebody to hit behind Josh Bell. If you want to make that Brian Reynolds, I suppose that's a possibility, but I'd rather have him hit in front of Bell. Right. That's, you know, that's a, that's a big spot, that fifth spot. Yeah, it really is, but I do like Newman, Reynolds, Marte, and Bell as it is Amazing. right now. They've been making yeah. a, a good offensive team, which they did at the All-Star break. I thought they were actually turning into a good offensive team, but look at the last two weeks. I mean, it's been ridiculous. Yeah, but the problem with all of this is that they won't spend money necessary we to know. go out and yeah. upgrade their pitching staff. And if you come in with the same essential group here, I don't know what you can expect anything different. All right, let's go out real quick to line two. That's Pete in Squirrel Hill. Hey, Pete, what's up? Hey, Bob, how are you? Welcome Good. back. Thanks. Hey, Bob, I'm not sure about Andrew about the family situation. I know he's married. Does he have any kids? Who? Oh, he has one on the way. Okay, because I was wondering. He's probably thinking foremost about, you know, his health and his family right. life. And he should. And I commend him for that. I yeah, I mean, you know what I don't said. like is that how people don't understand. They boo. They call them names. Come on. Yeah, again, put well, yourself Bob, in his the, boat. Bob, look at the society we live in. People <laughs> don't care about what's important in life. They care about this stuff, okay, that doesn't affect them and the stuff that never will. Okay, that's one of the problems with our country. But I got another question. Sure. What about a what about a hitting coach in Major League Baseball? I don't understand why they even have him. When you play baseball about fifteen, twenty years of your life to reach the major leagues, you learn from day one basically you swing at balls in a strike zone, you don't swing at balls that are not in a strike zone, you try to barrel up the ball. What I've seen in baseball and I start watching games at Ferguson Field. My uncle started taking me in the early 60s. The biggest change I've seen is the lack of discipline, Bob, hitters at the plate. They All right. I think that means, Pete, we're out of time. But, Gene, real quick, your comment on that. Absolutely. Uh, fewer and fewer players know the strike sound. That's a good observation, Pete. All right. Tom, Sue, Maryland. We'll get your calls next. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, only here on Pittsburgh CW.